Dear students, good morning. Welcome to this uh, two-day induction that we are going to organize for all the students who are now resuming uh, their studies at University of Rwanda. Uh, my name is Matthias Nduingoma. I am the director of CODEL, the Center for Open Distance and E-Learning, which is hosted at uh, Rukara campus of the College of Education. We have decided to organize this two-day uh, induction to help you to get enough skills so that you can navigate in your different uh, online modules. As you know, the COVID-19 that happened in the world affected also the University of Rwanda. And as one of the solutions that the university is uh, bringing is that everybody learns online. Uh, I would like uh, for this moment to show you the program of the two-day induction. And later, I will present on the topic called e-learning, where I will show you what is e-learning, uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of e-learning, and how you can now deal with e-learning. Uh, as you see, you started by logging in this event, and we are supposed to have the welcome remarks from the Vice Chancellor of University of Rwanda, and these welcome remarks will be done via a module that we have shared with you, the, uh, and the link also has been sent to everybody. But due to other activities, the Vice Chancellor is going to be available around 12. So we are now going to go to the next item, which is the introduction to e-learning, blended or blended learning. After that time, we are going to have an online course overview done by one of the, our e-learning officer, Mr. Tabon Bumbura Leon. And after, you will get a practical session to interact with uh, within the given components. You are going to get introduction to the profile management, how you can change your profile. As you know, many of you now, you are getting the problem of credentials, and by using the profile management, you can change uh, all the data uh, related to everybody. You are also going to get information related to forum. A forum is an activity where the lecturer is going to propose you a topic and you are going to discuss about it. And every student is going to post his view so that the lecturer can also give feedbacks. It's very important. You will also uh, going to uh, introduce to the resources and activities. We have charts and assignment. This is going to happen and be followed by the introduction to Moodle offline versions. You know, everybody here is talking about internet connection as one of the challenges uh, in e-learning. Yes, all of us, we know it, that it is very mandatory to have internet connection, but for the moment, we can say that it's not mandatory. You can work offline and fulfill all your duties. With these two uh, versions of Moodle, that we are going to do practically with Mr. Nharindwa Teonest, you will see that you can download and configure Moodle on your desktop and also on your mobile phones. When you have those versions on your gadgets, you will be able to work offline. And the time you will connect again to internet, immediately you will see that what you have in your computer is going to be sent to our server and something called uh, synchronization will happen. After that uh, session, we are going to have a practical session, of course, to install the desktop and mobile Moodle versions. 
you will be helped by a team of e-learning officers and you can chat via the messenger of Moodle, which it is a plugin which is already installed. And as we are going to finish uh, around 1 p.m., you will end with an evaluation and the recommendations done by Mr. Nhamomvura Leo. This is now for the first day because this is, uh, the induction is going to use two days. Tomorrow, you will also start by uh, login and we are going to have an open discussion on the first day. What happened today, we are going to give your uh, point of views, you are going to ask questions and the team of e-learning officers will help you. And all this discussion will be done through uh, messages. The next activity is going to be uh, presented by Dr. Bernard Bahati, who is the UR Director of Teaching, Learning and Enhancement. He will talk about the introduction to academic integrity. You know uh, that what you do online need to be of good quality. And to help you to achieve the quality of in your different works that you are going to submit online, we will ask you to use a software called Tanitin. It's a software that the university has bought and it is already integrated in Moodle, which is now our e-learning platform. Every lecturer has been asked to set assignment through Tanitin. It means when you are going to submit your, uh, uh, your assignment, immediately your lecturer will get the report produced by that software, where what we call uh, similarity indexes will be displayed. It means again that the lecturer will see that you have plagiarized or not, and according to the percentage of plagiarism that, you are, that is going to be produced, your lecturer can decide that you repeat or they can uh, remove some marks. Uh, after that one, we are going now to have another talk presented by Dr. Robina Namoreme. She is the director of library at the University of Rwanda. She is going to talk about open educational resources. It's very important because in most of the online modules, we are all uh, re uh, getting references to different open educational resources, to different teaching material, to different e-books that have been produced by other people from around the world. So she's going to, to explain it to you what is open educational resources, how can you get them, how can you recognize those ones which are now under what we call Creative Commons licenses. And after, you will get another live discussion for the two-day evaluation. And finally, we are now going to close the two days. Yes, even if we, we finish at 1.30 p.m., the remaining time of the day is for you to do practice. If you meet some problems, our team at Coder is ready. And I would also like also to inform you that there is another team of ODL champions who are present in all the campuses of the University of Rwanda. And ODL champions, they are lecturers. And recently, we have already also trained 860 students who are considered for us as student ODL champions. And they have been trained how to use this uh, platform, how to get access to this platform. And they are also ready to help you. And they have accepted that they are going to play the role of our ambassadors in your different uh, classes. Uh, now, let me go to uh, my presentation. What is e-learning? E-learning, you see that is made of two words. E, meaning electronic. Learning, everybody knows its meaning. But when now they are together, 
electronic learning, many people try to uh, define it, try to propose different definitions. And I think the number of students who are, who is following me, if I ask to everybody to give the definition of e-learning, what do you think about e-learning? Everybody is going to propose a definition. And I think that definition is going to be also good. So which means currently we have many, many definitions that people have tried to propose to explain what is e-learning. As you see, education via internet, network and standalone computers. So if you are doing or you are providing education via internet, via network, or through a standalone, a standalone computer is a computer which is not connected to internet. This is e-learning. E-learning is essentially the network enabled transfer of skills and knowledge. E-learning refers to using electronic applications and the processes to learning. And if now you can see all these definitions, they are meaning that you learn through electronic devices. You are learning through electronic applications. This is e-learning. So there is no single definition of the e-learning. Uh, I went um, through internet to check how other people are trying to define and I found that from Wikipedia, from other uh, sources, there are plenty or many definitions. You see here, e-learning is an electronic learning, is a type of education where the medium of instruction is computer technology. Learning, it is learning conducted via electronic media. This term covering a wide set of applications and processes such as web-based learning, computer-based learning. So in summary, there are many definitions which are now proposed to explain what is e-learning. So in our case now, we want to practice or to use e-learning for your learning, teaching, and assessment processes. It means you are going out to work with your computers, you are going to work with our e-learning platform, and your lecturers are also going to discuss with you through any other electronic gadget. They can use the mobile phones. You can use, uh, now to discuss, you can use the WhatsApp, WhatsApp. you can use uh, SMS to exchange information. So all these kind of activities uh, are going to fall in what we call e-learning. For the moment, we have also what we call blended. Now, when people are uh, uh, understanding, sorry, uh, hearing e-learning, some can think about online learning, yes. Others can think about blended learning, yes. Others can think about uh, hybrid learning or mixed learning. But the most important is that electronic is in everything, which means ICT is in every mode of delivery. And that mode of delivery is going to be called e-learning. Now, e-learning in education, it is being applied at all levels of education, from primary to tertiary education. Recently, with this COVID-19 pandemic, Everybody now knows that the Ministry of Education, through Rwanda Education Board, they availed a platform so that all students, all uh, pupils can go and get teaching material. It has been helpful and even now it is continuing. At the level of the University of Rwanda, we have also set an e-learning platform, and that platform is now hosting many, many uh, modules 
that are in your different uh, categories or different specialization. I can tell you that 100% of the, all the modules which are now going to be taught for trimester two and trimester three are all uploaded on this eLearn platform. So you are lucky, you are going to learn online, you are going to learn from any place, you are going to learn at any time. And we hope that this is going to improve the quality of teaching and learning. Yes, it's a new mode of delivery. We say mo new in our institution, but it has been existing since a long time in other countries. Now, the e-learning has many advantages, yes, as any system. It has also some disadvantages. If I start by the advantages of the e-learning, you see that, as I said, now I don't know where you are located, but you are following me. Even someone who is now not following me, he is going now to follow me offline, or he is going to follow me in evening or at any time when he will be available. So e-learning is helping the learning to be done anytime and any place. Those who are going to follow me or through a video which is going to be channeled in YouTube or in any other medium, you are going to do it in an asynchronous interaction. You can follow it and you can post your questions. And later, I can read and respond. Even in our Leland platform, when the lecturer is going to post a topic for discussion, you can respond why the lecturer is not connected, but the day he will be, or the time he will be connected, immediately he is going to react on your different uh, answers, and he's going to give you the feedback. So this is another advantage of the uh, e-learning. You know that in the traditional mode of delivery, the conventional mode of delivery, which means the face-to-face -face that we used to practice in our university, if you are not present in the classroom, immediately you are losing. You don't have any other chance to react on the questions of the teacher because they are live. Yes, another uh, advantage is the group collaboration. You are used to work in different groups. When your lecturers are giving you assignment, some assignment can be done in group. And here, everything is going to be done in group because it is on the platform. Yes, you can now work. You can see what other people are doing live or in a, a synchronized uh, manner. E-learning is also a new educational approaches where we find that many options and learning strategies become economically feasible through online courses. When we are not talking about e-learning, yes, we think that e-learning, it is a reality. E-learning is reducing the cost of education. E-learning is making the education to be more affordable. And we have seen it in one uh, program which is being running at the University of Rwanda in what we call distance training program where we have students who are learning online <coughs> or in blended learning mode and their school fees are less than what you are paying in conventional. So e-learning has this very important advantage to make education more affordable. We have also the integration of computers. Yes, we know all of us the importance of computers. Computers now, they help you to save the, uh, your different teaching material. You use to write on your papers, and there are many risks for the papers to be destroyed or to be lost. But by using computers, you can save your document in different places. 
This is another advantage. Uh, when now we talk also about the advantages, we can classify those advantages into two groups. One for the organization and another one for the individual. I mean here the university or the company which is being using that person who is going to learn online. What are now the advantages for the organization? This is going to help the institution to reduce the overall cost. Normally, for example, at the University of Rwanda, when there is a lecturer who is going for further studies, immediately he's li they used to leave the country and their salaries continued to be paid while the university is also obliged to recruit a new one. So if it is being done online, that person cannot leave the place where we are and he continues to work at university, he will get his salary and the university not, is not going to recruit another one. Secondly, the number of people that I'm teaching for the moment is too big. You cannot be accommodated in one room, but for the moment, all of us, all of you, you are following me, you are getting uh, my lecture, and the university is not consuming either the electricity nor the water. You are not here, you are not sitting, so we can remove the chairs, we can not buy the chairs. So all these things, they are now helping the university to uh, save the money. Yeah, there is another one, the learning times reduced. Yes, if you consult your notice boards in your different campuses, you find that the timetable starts from seven or from eight up to evening. It means every student is going to be asked to stay on campus during the whole time. But for the e-learning, the time of learning is going to be reduced. You connect or you read or you learn when you have time, which means now there is an average of 40 to 60 percent of the time which is going to be reduced while the outcome will be the same. There is also an increase of retention. Yes, in online, you are following me. In online, you can go on the platform, you read, and you stop when you finish. But for the increased retention, uh, when we talk about the uh, conventional mode of delivery in face-to-face, -face, a student can be absent and he's going to make a copy of what other students have written in the classroom. So this is another advantage of the e-learning. We have also the consistent delivery. Yes, all of you now you are, uh, you know that for the moment, I'm alone. I'm teaching a very big number. Maybe you are located at Busogo campus, Huye campus, Nyarugenge campus, uh, Gikondo, uh, Remera, Rwamagana, Rukara, or Nyagatare. So I am alone. If we have a team of people, you are following one person, and this person is giving is uh, broadcasting or is giving information to the whole group. While in other circumstances, if we have many people, even if they have the same content, the way they are going to deliver it will be different. So this consistency of delivery is also very important for the students. They cannot complain that this lecturer is teaching like this and the, the, the other one like this while the final examination or the final test is going to be the same. So e-learning 
is trying not to uh, help us to get this consistency in delivery. The next is expert knowledge. We know that in many countries, there are some areas where we don't have people specialized, many people specialized in that area. Now, with e-learning, if we have one expert, he can teach a big number of colleges at the same time. Let us say, for example, if we have microbiology, it is an example, which is being taught at uh, College of Medicine and Health Sciences, which is being taught at College of Science and Technology, and also at the College of Agriculture in uh, Busogo campus. If we have that one lecturer, he can be useful for all those colleges at the same time. And this is very important. We are sharing the expert knowledge that we have. Uh, by using e-learning, you cannot escape. If you stop, the lecturer will see it. If you finish, the lecturer will see it. So there is a proof of completion and certification. It is very it is essential element of training initiatives. So this can be automated and it is available in e-learning platform. Every lecturer is going to click somewhere, immediately can see that it has been completed or not. So you cannot escape. And this is also very important because you are going to see that you are obliged to work seriously. The e-learning cuts costs in the long term with effect of increasing of number. Yes, there is what we call the uh, economy of scale. There is what we call economy of scale. Uh, yes, we are, as I said, we want to make the education very affordable. In this case, now the education, sorry, the university can recruit a big number of students. When you have a big number of students, even if they pay not too much, at the end of the day, the, uh, the total can be big. So it's very important. And uh, the, that e-learning is helping the universities to achieve this uh, requirement of the, 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 the world, where now we have to train a big number of people who are looking for it. Uh, now, on the side of learners, you students, or any other person who is uh, working as a student, when we are now practicing e-learning, you learn on demand availability. It means you are not asked to come at the campus every time, as I said. You just sit when you feel comfortable. You just fit when you feel you don't have other things to do. And this is very important for e-learning. Again, we know that in a classroom, we have students who are fast or slow learners. And most of the time, the other group of slow learners meet problems. If a lecturer is fast in his teaching, those slow learners, they are going to, have to uh, remain behind. But for the moment, you need to have your self person. You take your, uh, your module online. You take your time. Today you use three hours. Tomorrow you can use five hours. It will depend on you. But what we need here is to respect the deadline that every lecturer is setting for every module. And this now is going to reduce the stress. And you understand that when you are running under stress, sometimes the, you are missing something. Now, the interactivity. Uh, yes, as I said, lecturers are going to set forums, di discussion forums, and everybody has now to interact with others. Most of the lecturers are going to, have to assign some marks for the interactivity. If you don't participate, they can write to you. They can ask you now to change your mind, they can ask you to follow others and to give your uh, point of views. And in this one, the lecturer can see that you are following or not. So 
it's another advantage, and the confidence. Yes, when you are alone, when you are learning online, you feel more confident because you are not challenged by other uh, students in your classroom. And when you give your point of view, immediately other people are not going to say that you are not like this or that. What they do, they give their other point of views and later the lecturer can help you to summarize and to correct everybody. So this builds confidence in you. There is also, as I said, the facilitation of access. Yes, as I said, maybe today you are located at uh, uh, Nyarugeng campus. If, for example, there is no internet connection, you can say, okay, let me go in town in one cyber cafe. You just sit there and you work. You can get access to the platform. You can do your assignment. You can uh, respond to the, uh, the chat. And this is now can be done from any place. And as you know, for example, what I'm doing today is being uh, recorded. And if I have to do another uh, induction, I will not going to uh, be, I'm, I'm not going to be obliged to come again in this studio. We are going to use the video which is recorded. So it's very important. The access to information is going to be easy. Yes, there are some disadvantages of e-learning. You know, wherever there is, uh, there are advantages, there, there are also disadvantages. As you see now for, as I said, there are advantages for the trainer or the organization. There are also disadvantages for both trainers and organizations. Uh, first of all, an institution to make sure that they want to adopt e-learning, there is an investment. There is an investment in technology. There is an investment in many things that are now uh, being used so that the e-learning can be done correctly. This upfront investment required, that, required of an e-learning solution is larger due to development costs. Now, what is good for uh, e-learning is you invest a lot and later now you can enjoy a lot. Now, there's also the problem of technology issues. Yes, some of you, you can say that you don't have uh, good computers. Some of you, you can say that where you are, the internet connection is not good. Some of you, you can say that uh, your provider, internet service provider is not working well. So all these technology issues, they are a disadvantage of uh, e-learning towards a learner or the institution. We used also to have inappropriate content. Yes, this happens when we go on internet when you go on internet, we know that most of you, you used to go on internet by using the search engine and they are people used to copy and paste. And normally, every information which is uploaded on any website or on the inline platform, it has to be genuine. It has to be correct and it has not to be copied from any other persons. We have to wait, to, to, sorry, to respect the copyright. There is also another disadvantage related to cultural acceptance. Uh, we know that since uh, the computer started to be used in the world, many resistance Many resistances happened related to the culture. Some societies say that if you use a computer, if you use internet, you are immediately uh, uh, connected to the ghost. Some people say that if you use this uh, software, uh, immediately you are being connected to the ghost. 
So such kind of behavior, such kind of cultural acceptances are also a disadvantage for e-learning. People are not coming to use e-learning e because they think that uh, when you use it, you are going to lose something. Yeah, there is also uh, the portability. Yes, we used to tell to our colleagues lecturers that when we are posting information, we need to make sure that our client or our students, they are able to open it. And this problem is related to what we call the portability. Uh, I can have a document written in Microsoft, in, in Microsoft Office, Word, but the version can be different from what you have. If, for example, you are using Office Word 2003 or 98, there are some computers which are not still using it. And someone else is using Office 2016. Immediately, you cannot read it if you have a low version. But the opposite side is possible. When you developed a document in a low version, it can be read, read in a, a high version. So we need not to tell to people that, make sure that when you are saving that document, every person using any version can read it. Another thing, you used to read document written in uh, with the format of PDF format. If you don't have Acrobat reader, immediately you cannot read this PDF. So the portability is very important. Uh, there is also another uh, disadvantage. Of course, it happened since people used to work with computers. There are some people are getting addicted with the computers. There are some people who are getting addicted with the tablet or telephones. So the social life, the cultural interaction is being reduced. So we need not to be careful. Even if we are adopting the technology in our life, we need also to think that the uh, physical interaction is also important. Some people, when they remain every time with their computers, there is also the way of talking, the way of interacting with other people, which is being affected. And this is very important. Yes, uh, in Rwanda, we have uh, possibilities to succeed in learning. We know that the government is supporting uh, students. We know that there was this one laptop per child, and now we are uh, enjoying the one laptop, one laptop per student. Of course, year one students, you have not yet got the chance to get this, these computers, but I hope very soon we get them. There are other uh, projects which are being sustained by the government, and all these ones are helping so that we can use e-learning in Rwanda. Uh, yes, there is also a threat to e-learning. We are now, we can find that different countries, different companies are also uh, not reducing the cost of internet connection. And this is uh, also affecting students or any other user of e-learning to get access to uh, the content. We have also the potential ICT crime and plagiarism and difficulties to con in, there are difficulties to control them. Yes, all of you have heard about people who are trying not to break other uh, systems, who are now trying to, what we call, to hack other systems, who are now trying to take your document by applying what we call now, now the plagiarism. And fortunately for our case, we have the anti-plagiarism software to deal with this. So all of these one, there are some uh, disadvantages of e-learning. And the last point, as you see, is also talking about the loss of job due to ICT application. Yes, in some areas it happened, but in some areas ICT is creating job. And as you know, the uh, economy in different countries now is being increasing because of ICT. So it is creating jobs. Uh, they are 
uh, some proposition to succeed e-learning in education. Here, we want that we organize professional training in e-content development. Yes, lecturers need to learn how to create good e-content. The, the content that is being uploaded on the platform. Here we are using a new pedagogy. So we need a new way of doing things. And for this, I would like to invite everybody, when you are going to visit, when you are going to log in in the platform, immediately you will see that on the top of the main page of our Elan platform, there is a link where you can see the different policies and tools that we are using for getting a good e-content. Uh, one of them is what we call storyboards and the other one is the uh, blended learning modules development template. Those two tools are available and try to make sure that when you are reading every module Make sure that the two documents they are there inside. You just you can see in the in the storyboard, you will see that the lecturer is showing you the whole plan of the module. It is very important. It helps you to know what are you what are you going to learn, what is now what are now the learning uh, outcomes, what are now the learning activities, and what are now the different learning uh, resources that are needed for that module. Uh, the other proposition to sensitize all stakeholders. Yes, in this matter, we have many stakeholders. When we talk about e-learning, there is you the students, there are you the student. We have also the parents because now they are uh, being involved. They are supporting you in terms of the internet connection, in terms of the gadget. There is also the government and government organizations we have also the private sector because the private sector can help us, for example, to, bring, to set some loan schemes where now people can go and get the computers or any other electronic gadget that can help us to learn online and later we can pay them in a way that we have now to decide. Uh, there's also the formation of purchasing consortiums to get better prices of, for schools. Yes, we now feel that uh, alone, it's very expensive to have internet connections. We can make groups, we can make consortiums of many institutions and the price is going to be uh, reduced. The other thing is to create an educational ISP. And this is also being planned at uh, University of Rwanda. It has been talked up in uh, the U.S. strategic plan, which is being now used, they are going to have this educational internet service uh, provider, and it is going to help us to get access by spending few money. Uh, okay, to subsidize the connectivity for schools, this is also what the government can do, where now they can work with IT uh, companies, telecom companies, and the connection can be, uh, the, the connection fees can be reduced if now they do it. And also we can group schools, as I have said, to create what we call now the, the consortiums. Yes, today we are talking about the e-learning. Since yesterday, you have been asked to learn online. Since yesterday, you have been to asked not to be in a classroom if there is no lecturer. You can remain where you are. Maybe some of you, they are still at home. Other they are in campuses, on campuses. And you can sit under a tree and practice your learning. If now we want to do this e-learning, there are some basic technology skills that we used to require for every person, both students and also lecturers. And the list that I'm making here, 
it's not an obligation for everybody to know everything here. But just look into this list. If you find that there is something which is important for you that you don't master, of course, try to learn it yourselves. Try to work with your colleagues. Try to work with your university, your colleges. Your school, this is something that you are not going to learn, I think, on field. Everybody knows the file management, where we are using, for example, Windows Explorer. Uh, everybody can download. Nowadays, it is very uh, easy to download a software because there are a lot of instructions associated to that software so that the installation can be uh, easily done. Uh, there is also this learning management skills, and now you are being faced to Moodle. We have other learning management uh, system uh, called the Web, Web City, Blackboard, Canvas, and so on. But since now you are using Moodle, if you are now presented to, you are facing another one, another new learning management system, it will be very easy because the principles, they are the same. Uh, you need also these skills, the video conferencing skills. You need the skills to know how to manage your storage devices. You are using hard disks, you are using CDs, now CDs are being reduced, but you are having USB drives, the zip disks, zip disks they are not used in uh, our personal uh, business, they are used in banks and other big uh, uh, institutions, companies, DVDs they are being used, but for your uh, positive computers, there are no CDs or DVDs uh, uh, ROM. Now, you, you need also to have the scanner knowledge. And yes, those who are having the mobile uh, smartphones, you are doing the, you are scanning. You are using the tablet because you are using your phones. There is also the knowledge of the web. If you are being connected and you don't see that there is no the connection, you know to whom you are, you, you, you can uh, ask that question. And lastly, we need also to have this educational copyright knowledge. And this is very important for the quality of education. It is now where we are now asking you not to copy and paste always. Yes, because we are, you have talked about the uh, open educational resources and you are going to get more explanations tomorrow you are going to be told that some teaching material, some online material can be used and they will tell you how to use them. This is now the education of copyright. And lastly is the computer security knowledge. Yes, security is very important for everybody. You need to know that when you are using a computer where there is no antivirus, you are on risk. So you need to know all this uh, information. So, in summary, the 20 basic knowledge skills are very important for every e-learning users. If, for example, you can see this list, you can assess yourself, you can evaluate yourself. There are 20. How many out of the 20 are you mastering? If you find that there is something which is listed here and that you don't master, please go back and learn it. Yes. We are talking about now the e-learning. Let us go on the UR e-learning platform. My colleague who is going to follow me he is going to go in detail, but let me talk it in summary. Uh, we have decided, as you have seen in the previous uh, slides, there are many types of learning management systems, but at University of Rwanda, we have decided to use Moodle as the learning management system and there are many reasons that we are, we have, uh, that are dictating us to decide on Moodle. Yes, Moodle is among the 20 most popular learning management system in the world and we choose it uh, because of the following uh, benefits. It is an open source. 
it's an open source it is accessible to everybody and today you will see that you can download and install Moodle desktop on our desktop or computers and you can also download and install Moodle on your mobile phones yes this is an advantage or this is a benefit of Moodle it is cost effective you don't need to pay for it you just go there and download and install it is having a simple interface or it is a user friendly uh, software it has a simple interface and an intuitive navigation which consists of only three distinct columns you are going to see that Moodle has three columns and it's very easy to use it is also very easy to customize by any institutions and it has this uh, uh, benefit of being used online yeah for now the quality of the elan platform we have different policies strategies and the guidelines that you are going to follow and as i said you are going to have this list on the main page of the e-learning platform the address is there elearning.ur.ac.rw you can go there and try now to get access in your different uh, modules uh, you are now asked to log in so that you can get access your different lecturers tried now to enroll you in the different modules make sure that or be informed that you cannot get access to a module when the lecturer has not enrolled you inside unless you are the administrator of the platform otherwise you are only given the permissions or the right to see modules where you are only registered sorry uh, enrolled now we have tried out to un register all the students that the university is having today and some of you you may face some problems of login because some of you didn't use this platform for a, a long time others you have forgot your password or your username we are there to help you those few cases where now there's a problem of uh, login we are there to help you we have e-learning officers we have all the champions and all these teams are helping you now you can access the ODA policies and the online guides on this platform on this page and to get access to this you don't need to be uh, inside the system or don't need to log in yeah now this uh, sorry Moodle is having many features and it, they are those ones that are helping us to decide on why we can choose it and those features some are for students others for teachers and others for the administrator now i'm going only to explain for students <clears throat> you have access uh, to the learning material you just log in as i said immediately you are in the group of modules that are in your class with Moodle, you can collaborate as i said the lecturer is going to create a discussion forum there is a chat in Moodle, so you can discuss with your students the lecturer can create groups in your class and you can discuss with your students so there are these facilities of collaboration you can work on given activities this is the what you do the assignment quizzes discussion forum join join the virtual classroom etc so all these the activity that you are doing going to do and you can also going to get access to the grades or the feedback from your lecturer as a student you don't need to create you don't need 
the skills of creating a model, uh, a module. You don't need the skills of uploading a module. You don't need the skills of editing a module. You just navigate. So here I insist on the navigation skills. Please, this is what now you have now to, to learn. And this is what my colleagues are going to show you uh, practically. Yeah, there are some available uh, uh, functional plugins that we have and that help sometimes the lecturer to communicate to students or to share information with the students. We have these assessment plugins. In your different activities, you are going to do the formative assessment and the formative assessment is going to be conducted through our e-learning platform. You want to do assignment, quizzes, virtual programming lab, and all this is going to help the lecturers and the students for uh, the formative assessment. For the summative assessment, of course, we are in the blended learning mode. You will be called and see it somewhere and be invigilated. We have also some collaborative uh, uh, tools like forums, chat, messaging, as I have said. Uh, we have also the virtual classroom, virtual classroom where now a lecturer can sit somewhere or in the studio and try to broadcast. We have this big blue button, we have Microsoft Teams, we have um, Zoom, we have Skype, there are too many. Now the lecturers are going to decide which one to use for your class and they are going to show you how to configure it in your different computers so that you can get the virtual uh, classes. I say that we have also the tiny team and lastly we have also the attendance uh, plugin. This is very important because we don't want that you dodge the classes. We need to see you there. We have said that you learn from anywhere at any time but during the class we need to see you. Every unit that is presented is being taught during a given time, a given period of time. So if you don't appear, the lecturer will notice it in the attendance. And sometimes the attendance can be considered in the formative assessment. Uh, so you need to be uh, careful. Uh, this is the, uh, the different activity, but for you it is not very uh, important. This is important for the lecturers who are going to develop. So I can now assure you that all the lecturers have been trained to do it, to do it. and we have most of the students who are doing postgraduate studies. They have been trained. We have also, as I said, the audio champions and uh, there is also the student audio champions who are 860 trained. Yeah, all the students currently registered at the University of Rwanda, almost 28,000, they are registered in this platform. And you are in different, in these two categories, postgraduate and undergraduate. And all the lecturers who are get, uh, getting different rights, they are there. We have co what we call course creators. This is the group of lecturers. We have the managers and we have the IT support. And this is the team which is now uh, helping you. Now, as a recommendation that I can tell you is we need to facilitate and support lecturers and students to acquire internet and the laptops. And this is what the university is working on. And we need also to ask both students and lecturers to use Moodle desktop and mobile Moodle. We have said this is going to help you to work offline, not to rely every time on internet connection. And for the virtual classes, you know that Microsoft 365 Education Solutions has been now given to Minedic and all the uh, affiliated institutions to Minedic, they are now getting the licenses for this Microsoft 365. And it is where now we have Microsoft Teams 
what now you are required to do is to get the emails provided by the university. The emails that you can use through the email server of the University of Rwanda. If you don't have it, you will not have many rights in using Microsoft Teams. So, uh, dear students, this is the end of my presentation. I would like to thank everybody who has followed and I thank also those who are going to follow it because I think all of you are not on but it will be uh, posted on our uh, eLearn platform through the modules which has been indicated to you. You can also get it through YouTube channel uh, for any time from wherever you are. We can now welcome your comments because I have seen that most of you are giving some comments and later now we will react on them. As we have said, in virtual classes, feedback needs to be provided. I thank you very much for your attention.